Day 14. We are almost halfway through this series and it has been a fun, although taxing ride. Yesterday we went out to a Poda Park and did some activation of the park itself, but also chased of some stations for the Route 66 special event that happens every year about this time. And uh, tomorrow I'm going to be in the truck again driving up to a new location that you're going to have to watch to find out where that is. But I might be doing some chasing of that tomorrow as well because I believe that event goes for like another three or four days, something like that, from the time of this recording. So tomorrow when I'm in the truck, I might be doing some more hunting out there. But today we are going to do something that I have done very little of in the past and I haven't done it in a very long time. So here's what we're going to do today. I have set up a Yagi antenna on my Gigaparts carbon fiber mast. This is a dual band Yagi antenna. It's five elements on two meters and it looks like it's about five elements on 440. These short ones right here are for the 440 band. These longer ones are for the two meter band. So the two meter band's on 144 megahertz and the 440 band is 70 centimeters, which is 440 megahertz. So as a general rule, the higher free and frequency you go, the shorter your antenna needs to be. So the shorter Yagi antennas are for the higher bands and the longer elements on this antenna are for the lower bands, which is 144 megahertz. This thing is seen somewhere. I don't know if you can tell that or not in the video, but uh, I picked this up at a swap fest several years ago. To my knowledge, I don't think I've ever actually used it. I, it's, one of those, it's one of those impulse buys you get at a ham fest. You're like, oh, wow, that looks cool. And the guy only wanted, I think I only paid like 40 bucks for it or something crazy like that. It is a Kushcraft, is the brand right there, Kushcraft. Those are no longer made. It used to be owned and manufactured by MFJ. They went out of business last year. So you can't even get this antenna anymore. Maybe I should hit the guys up at Gigaparts and say, hey, you guys uh, who are, have the Atelitron line now, start making some Kushcraft stuff. But anyway, so I put this on the Gigaparts mast earlier today and I connected it to my Mezzi and Poloni coax. This is called a Potaflex coax. It's orange so you can see it easily in the field. And once again, these videos are not sponsored. Mezzi and Poloni sponsors a lot of my videos, but not anything for this 30 day series. But if you share the link or if you follow the link in the description of this video, I will link it to the Mezzi and Poloni page on the Gigaparts website, Electra, Electra, Electra. What do you think? Hey, sit down, sit, 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 sit. What do you think about Mezzi and Poloni? Your thoughts, anything? Spuds, what about you? You want to go on a road trip? I'm not, I'm not sensing a lot of excitement from you guys about that. So, okay. Yeah, you all sniff each other because you've never done that before. But with the link in the description below in the coupon code of HR2 Cables, you can save a 10% discount. Electra, you had your spotlight already. You can save a 10% discount on all of their products. So check that link in the description below and support them because they do support me on my regular videos. So I've got the Rig Expert Stick Pro analyzer here. I really like these sticks. Uh, they've got four or five versions of these and the main difference between them is how high up in frequency they go. This one will go to 600 megahertz. So it easily covers the two meters and the 70 centimeters band that on that antenna that we're looking at today. But I plugged this up and I was afraid that since this antenna is, I've had it sitting outside and sitting in the garage. I haven't really used it much at all. If ever, I was afraid it was going to be something wrong with it. But guess what? We've got a really good reading here. 144 megahertz at 1.6, which is not awful, but not great. It's not, it's not perfect, but it's certainly doable. Okay, so we're going to go back here and I'm going to hit that and that's we're going to look at the whole two meter band right there. And I think it's uh, nope, I always get confused on which button does what. All right, so we're going to scan the band there. So so it's a little bit 1.6 at 145. We go down to 143 and it's 1.7. Okay, so we're going to make it a little bit. Let's make it a little bit more narrow there. Let's go to 144. 1.6 to 1 at 144. When I first put this together, it was reading about 1.3 at 144. So I've moved it around a bit. The coax has moved a bit. I've adjusted the height of the antenna. We're about to put it up in the air. So pretty much anything below two is fine, but you want, you really want it around 1.5 to one or less. As close as 1.0 to one as you can get really. But 1.6 to one is not terrible. 
1.65, 145 megahertz, 1.6. So we can see the peak there. So, I mean, this antenna is going to do just fine for some two meter sideband work. Now, the reason I'm putting this together today is because every Wednesday evening at, at 8 p.m., there is an event in Texas called Sidewinder on 2. This is actually a nationwide event. I'll share some screenshots from the, from the website here, but SWOT, Sidewinder on 2, they do VHF two meter nets in various parts of the country throughout the, throughout the, the week, every, every week. And a gentleman named Bob, W5FKN, used to run the net here in this area. He's up in the Decatur area, which is where we were um, yesterday for the Route 66. Well, it's really close to where we were yesterday for the Route 66 event, really close to the LBJ grasslands up there. But I emailed Bob this morning, and I'm like, hey, do you still do this? Because I've checked into this net in the past, but it's been several years since I've done so. And he replied back to me and said, no, he's retired. He no longer, he's got too much noise at his home QTH. He can't really hear a weak signals anymore. But his call sign, name and call sign are still listed on the website, so I'm wondering if anyone's running the Texas version of this net or not. We're going to try it tonight, and we're going to look. Uh, we're going to see. And I might just start calling CQ on two meters and see two meter sideband calling frequency, which I want to say is 144.200. I'm going to look that up here in a minute, and we might see what we can find on two meter sideband. Also, I might want to try some FT8 on two meters, because why not? I'm going to set up the IC9700, my Icom IC9700, which I've only used one time since I've had it. It'll do 100 watts on 2 meters, and a, it's a great, great sideband rig if you want to work some 2 meter sideband. So we're going to set that up now and see what kind of noise we can raise on 2 meter sideband. Uh, KC5HWB, you still there? I'm still here. Are you vertical or horizontal? I am horizontal right now. Hey, put your antenna west towards Trophy Club. I'm pointing east. I think I'm pointed north right now. I can point it, uh, yeah, let me point it a little bit west. Hold on. Okay, how is that there? KC5HWB. Uh, much better. How do you hear me? Uh, you're about the same, really. Okay, well, I'm looking about Okay, when you first keyed up, I heard you pretty good. I was pointed a little uh, north that way, but then uh, that time I couldn't hear you as well. Try it again. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. How's that? W six M D I. That's a little bit better. Okay, I pointed a little bit more west as well. KC five H W B. Yeah, I heard what you said. That uh, I actually emailed Bob this morning and asked him about uh, the net control, and uh, he told me that he had given it up. I didn't realize it was just recently. But, uh, but I wondered if there was someone else uh, running the net or not, because if you look at the Sidewinder on 2 uh, website, it still lists Bob on there, so I didn't know what was going on. Yeah, that was, it's just been within the past week, week or two that uh, that happened. And uh, what happens there is that uh, apparently he's going to give it up. I don't think anybody's picked it up yet. Uh, they're going to probably... Excuse me a minute. I came down with a case of the Siberian crud at the office the other day. We had a couple of students in from Saudi Arabia, and I think they gave me a, one hell of a cold. Anyway, what happened is that uh, he had to give it up because it was um, just too noisy, and he couldn't yeah. copy anybody over. Yeah, yeah, that's what he mentioned to me as well, and uh, that's too bad. But Because uh, I've checked in in that net before, but it's been years. So uh, a two-meter sideband was my the topic of the video I'm recording today, so I was... I was getting the camera set up and everything. I, I've got a, uh, a Yagi antenna. I've got an old Cushcraft dual band Yagi antenna on my um, uh, carbon fiber mast. It's probably up about 20, 25 feet right now. It's not real high, but uh, but it is pointed out towards you. I'd, and that last uh, that last transmission or two, I had a really good copy on you. All right, so I put it back up about where is it? It's probably about I think the top of my house that where that uh, gutter is, is right uh, about 17, 18 feet. So it's probably about 20 feet right now, realistically. Something like that. And it is pointed west, because my house points north. So that's north right there. So it's pointed not quite due west, but close to it. Okay, so these guys do what they call a chaos net, because the Sidewinder on 2Net apparently uh, doesn't have a net control right now. So we'll see what, uh, we'll see what happens with that. 
Hey, Jason, this is Rusty, WD5RP. You know, funny coincidence, I was watching your very foggy MENA video. <laughs> Okay, yeah, yeah, that's, uh, I think that one went live, was that today? Shoot, I get the days mixed up. KC5HWB, uh, uh, WD5RD, you're coming in loud and clear. Uh, good copy over here in Grapevine. Yeah, I would assume you're not in, in uh, Galveston. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> no. that, that was, um, you know, I've never gotten to go. I always have family conflicts around me at the time, but I'm going next year, Hooker Crook, because it looked like that was a little bigger ham fest than what I expected. But I've been enjoying your 30 days of, uh, of ham radio and, and, and all this stuff. You travel a lot, don't you? Well, uh, I mean, normally, no. I am for this uh, event that I wanted to do. I've kind of uh, put together a game plan two or three months ago, and it took me a few weeks to kind of come up with all the ideas and figure out where to go and figure out what to do. So I'm doing a little bit extra right now. But uh, other than Galveston, my wife and I own a, a house in Galveston, um, and we rent it out during the summer, uh, but during the off season in the fall and winter, we try to go down there ourselves as much as we can. So I'm down there a lot, but other than that, I, I don't typically travel a whole lot. Okay, well, it just looks like it from your videos. Of course, I guess that's uh, that's that's when you would do it. You, yeah. You're you're kind of the day tripper of ham radio. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I guess I could see that. Anyway, thanks for stopping by tonight. We, you, you've been following Art's uh, uh, reflector messages? No. You know what? I, I, I should probably sign up for that. So I used to... It's probably been three, four, five years, and I've checked into the Sidewinder on 2Net back when Bob used to run it. And uh, and I knew I wanted to do that uh, for my... This is I'm recording a video right now for this series, this 30 Days series. And um, I set up a, a Yagi in the backyard, got a dual-band um, six-element uh, Kushcraft that's pointed uh, west from Grapevine right now. And um, I emailed Bob this morning, and he had replied and said that he didn't do it anymore. Now, I, I just learned recently that um, uh, from MDI up there, he was telling me that that just happened within the last week or two. But uh, I was hoping that uh, someone else would come on here and do net control just to um, just to kind of like, you know, keep the uh, keep it alive and whatnot. Because you look at the website, it's still got Bob's name. But you guys do this chaos net, and that sounds interesting to me as well. Yeah, that, that's what we've nicknamed it because nobody knows which way to aim their yagis and we double and triple on top of each other. So that's, um, uh, you know, that's what's going to, we're just going to be a watering hole on 250 on Wednesday nights to maintain the tradition until we find somebody that's willing to uh, commit to being that control operator. That's the problem. You know, Bob, FKN Bob up in Decatur has, has run this net since 1998. Yeah. That's yep. a long time. We sure appreciate everything he did for us. But he's got noise problems up there. He's got a solar farm and some high, high power wires and some other stuff that's really messed him up. So he is, uh, he's certainly uh, been, uh, he's done his share. It's all I've got to say. Yeah. yeah, agreed, agreed. Yeah, Bob's a great dude. I, I've seen him at many ham fests, shook his hand many times. Uh, got a couple of rotators uh, rebuilt by him a while back. So, yeah, great guy. I didn't realize he'd be doing it quite that long, but yeah, um, definitely gonna miss him. Uh, maybe he'll, maybe he'll listen in sometimes. But he did tell me he had a noise problem. So, well, hey man, I don't want to hog the frequency. So if there's other people out there that want to come in there, I'd, I'll put the mic down and just listen for a minute. But uh, this is KC5 uh, KC5 HWB over here in Grapevine, right next to the airport. I think I heard KC5 HWB on there. Yeah, hang on, he's trying to talk to Mike. Uh, he's gonna aim south and see if he can work Mike. W5UC Mike. Oh, okay. Okay, let's try that. KC5 HWB. He's hollering at you, Mike. Jason's hollering at you. He was kind of in the noise a minute ago. Let me uh, let me try to point a little bit more southeast rather than south. Nope. Okay, hang on. He's gonna he's gonna try to aim at you again, Mike. So give him a little bit of talking. See if Jason can get me pinpointed there, but uh, anyway, good evening, Jason, if you're on me. Whiskey 5 Uniform Charlie. Okay, that got it, buddy. Whiskey 5 Uniform Charlie, KC5 HWB, good evening. Yeah, good evening to you. Nice to, nice to get to work here for the first time. Yeah, you too. I uh, Like I was telling the guys here, I've, I've, I checked into this net like five, six years ago when Bob was running it, but hadn't been on two-meter sideband in a while, so I definitely uh, wanted to try it out again. It's working great. Rotating that beam around is... Uh, 
makes a big difference. And you're pointing in the right direction, you're getting the right station, it makes a big difference. But there's a guy that, that way, and I was originally pointed that way, and then I was pointed that way, and then I went south, and the guy in uh, Eustis was out that way. It's fun. It's fun. I, I, I need to get a, a remote control rotor to rotate that thing. But uh, yeah, so that's the Sidewinder on 2 net, or the Chaos net, as they call it. I think I'm going to try to get this uh, mast mounted to the side of the ham shack. So anyway, I've got a call i got to get on. So let me, uh, let me put that. That's the, this is 144.250 if you're in the North Texas area. Wednesday nights, 8 p.m. And um, I picked up Mike, uh, or I'm sorry, WA5MMDI. I picked him up about a half hour early. I was just throwing my call sign out to see if the radio was working, and he came right back to me. So now he's not too far from me. But, uh, but that was good. So, yeah, maybe I might, might try to put this on the things to do for Wednesday night. Let's read some donations, guys. All right, guys, we're going to read some donations. As of today, we are at $3,105. Total donors is 59, 59 do, uh, different donors. We got two notes today. In memory of WH6DTO Norman Taylor, uh, who is now Silent Key. So thank you for that, in memory of. And also from my friend Romy, N8WWR, who wants to advertise the North Central Texas Simplex Net that takes place on Fridays. Fridays at 8 p.m. Central Time on 146.58 megahertz. This is actually a net. I've checked into it once, maybe twice before. It's actually a net I was thinking about trying to check into for an additional episode on this series. Because that, uh, that Simplex episode, day three, I think it was, that was a very popular episode. In fact, that was the first one to break 10,000 views. So maybe we will do some more with Simplex. If you guys would like to see that, put a note below. Thank you for the donations. Go to awrl.org forward slash 30 days to make a donation to AWRL Teachers Institute, which is who we're supporting. 73 guys, we'll see you tomorrow.